After consulting dozens of companies on how to build their business systems in Notion, I began to see some commonalities. Basically, they were systems that were needed for all the companies that I have worked with. And that's when I had the idea of creating a system exactly like that. A system that contains almost everything that a business is going to need. And as you may know, if you've been following me for a little bit, I always try to make everything as simple as possible. So I have worked very hard to make this a very simple system. So in this video, I'm going to show you how that looks. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, why do we need a business system in the first place? Because I don't wanna make you lose your time. Every business that wants to scale is going to need a business system, even solopreneurs like me. A system here stands for something that is going to make all your processes within your company streamlined, so we minimize mistakes, and that is going to allow you to take perspective of the company, of where the company is going, and how things are going on. Repeated tasks are gonna have a procedure, all your financials are gonna be in place. You're always gonna know what's going on. Your strategy is aligned with your daily tasks. Your leads are organized and reached out when you wanted and needed to reach them out. So I've been feeling that without a system, my head will always be in the woods and I will not be working on the business. I will work in just in the business. And as you know, we need perspective to drive the business forward. But why is then that not every company has a system? Well, because creating a system takes time and normally, Early stages companies have everything but time, well also not much money. So for them investing a lot of time into creating one of these systems is virtually impossible because they are busy in doing the work. But the way that I see this is as taking the time for sharpening the saw before you are going to cut some wood. Yes, if you try to cut the wood without a sharpened saw, you may start right away, but I am sure that is going to take you much longer in the end than if you had taken the time, sharpened the saw and then get started with the task. Maybe even with an unsharpened saw, you will not be able to cut the full piece of wood. But probably after this video, you will realize that you don't need that much time. So let me walk you through the system. There are three differentiated parts in this system. The backend, the workflows, and the dashboards. So let's start with the backend. So this is the main page of the system. And if we go here to the backend, what we are going to be able to see is all the databases that contain this system. And why have I decided to create a backend? Well, First of all, everything is super organized. We know all the databases that are in play within our system. So if we need to change something, some property, whatever, we can always come here because we will find everything within the system. Second of all, because of security, having all the core databases in this page where we probably will never go to is much more secure to prevent us from accidentally deleting any database. Because if we delete something, it's gonna be from the dashboards which are linked databases, which are completely replaceable. And as I said, I have tried to make this as simple as possible. So there is just 18 databases over here governing the whole system. Okay, so here is where all the data is sitting on. Now let me show you the workflows or how do we enter the data into the system. Here we have a page with workflows. Okay, so why did I create this? Because I have seen in all the audits that I have done that one of the main reasons why systems don't work is because they become messy over time. And why do they become messy over time? Well, because we don't have a process to input data into it. So then we will forget to relate one database with the other. So then that entry doesn't appear in some of the filters and gets lost forever. Or we forget to include a tag into an entry. And again, it doesn't appear anywhere in, in the filters that we have set up. So slowly and slowly, everything become a mess. But I have found that whenever I have implemented workflows into any system, everything has become much more organized. So let me show you some examples of, of what I mean by workflows. Let's say that we encounter a new lead that we may want to work with. So we will go to the enter new lead workflow and this workflow is going to guide us step by step, adding all the information that we will need in this case. So first we will create the company. Once we finish, we check the input done. And here we write the information about the contact. We want to contact him monthly, input done. And now the information about the project. The status is we are scheduling call. The project owner is the boss. And that's it. So like this, we have made sure that we are always inputting everything that we need for every situation. And like this, we have workflows for everything, for creating new invoice, new tasks, new client proposal, new meeting, new month, and so on. Okay, so now that we know where the data is resting and how we are going to input data into the system, let's see how we are actually going to be using this system. As you see, everything here is separated by department and in each of the dashboards, we are going to be showing the information relevant for each of these departments. So let's take a look at this finances dashboard, which is 
one of the most important ones because knowing the numbers of a company is totally a must. And why? Because for example, when I started my company, I wasn't really counting the income that I was getting. So I didn't know if I could afford, let's say, hiring a copywriter for creating a landing page or whatever, or hire a new virtual assistant. So knowing our numbers is completely a must for our company. So here we will be able to see all our money movements. Let me show you this example. Everything that is not paid is going to be over here. All the invoices will be attached here. Everything that happened in November with the total uh, income minus expenses over here. Everything that happened in October and, and so on. Everything that is paid, the account that this money is going in or out from. Then over here, we will have the unpaid separated between overdue and not paid but on time. So these ones we will have to, to take action on. And here he will say us how long they're overdue for. If we want to see the financials by clients, we can also go here. This is one company. So this is everything not paid, overdue, paid, and so on. This is the, the business accounts with the account balance over time. And if we want to see everything by, by year or by month, like the, the more general numbers, we can also come here. So needless to say that this is all automatic. This is all automatic numbers. And the only thing that we need to do is just create new invoices whenever they come and just fill in these properties. And the rest is going to be completely automatic. But we will not have any numbers over here if we don't have sales, right? So let's go to the, to the sales dashboard where we will be able to see the pipeline of all the projects that are coming in and how much money we have in each state. Oh, by the way, if, whenever the project goes to backlog, he will go to our team and, and we can start working on it. So this is just the sales part of the process. This is contacts that I need to reach out. You can see here in the relationship status because previously we have said how often we needed to contact them. So this is calculating when was the last time that we met and if we need to, to reach them out. And these are the upcoming sales meetings. Okay, so here we can see at a glance everything that is going on for our sales. Of course, every time that we contact someone, this is going to appear here. All the meetings that we have, the latest and the upcoming, will always be here and the last contacted people. Okay, so this is the communication hub that we're going to have for all the communications, internal and external. And of course, some extra workflows to create new meeting, add new contacts and a new company. So we don't have to go to the workflow space so we can do everything from here. But then if we want to check everything that is going on with one specific company, we can simply go here. We will have the list of all the companies that we are working with. And we have a company template that if we run, we will pull all the information across all the databases related to this company, the projects that we have with them. Let me open as a page. The projects that we have with them, the meetings, the transactions and invoices with their statues, the contacts within the company, the proposals that we have sent. So everything is over here. Another thing, while managing a company, it is very important that ourselves and the employees that are working with us have a manageable workload, right? So we will need to have some kind of way to know what people are working on and whether it's too much or too little. So for this, I have created this project database where we will be able to see, for example, that the tech guy is already doing probably too much because he has three projects at the same time with three, six, 10 tasks left. So probably he's a little bit overworked and we may wanna talk to him and check if this is too much for him and if he needs any help. And in this case, the marketing guy doesn't have much to do, just two tasks left. So probably we may think of some new marketing alternative or marketing strategy that we can start implementing and that she can tackle. Then of course, if we wanna check all the information about, let's say, project alpha, we just have to click here and this comes from a template. We will see all the tasks that are pending, the meetings that we've had, the notes, the, the proposal for the, for the project. So we'll have all the information about the project. Then of course, we have the good old OKR overview, the objectives and key results, both are linked. So objectives are non-quantifiable and key results are quantifiable. So here we will be able to set the current uh, status, the goal and the progress that this progress is, is automatic and is a cool visual representation. So for example, for making our company go viral, we have these three key results. So once these three are done, we will be able to check this as completed. 
So this is basically to don't forget where the company is going and which are our objectives, okay? So my recommendation would be to check these values at least one time per week and update them to make sure that we are actually moving forward. And then one of my favorite pages is this one of the products and services. Why is one of my favorite? Because I am all about focusing on what is working and forgetting what is not. So here we will be able to see which products are being sold the most and with which average order value. This I'm taking the information from all the transactions that we saw before. So like this, if we have been running this for a little bit of time and we see that this product is just having $50 in value and no one is buying it, so probably we can discard it. And if we want to go a little bit more in detail, we can come here and we can see who did these transactions and how much it was, when it was and everything. Okay, so this is more the, the nitty gritty of all the products. But like this, we can take product decisions, taking into account how much or how not so much they were sold. Okay, so you may be thinking that these are all general dashboards, but what if we need something more personalized? Okay, I am Daniel, what do I need to get done daily? So where do I see it? Okay, so for this, we have this employees dashboard that these are all inside of a database. So let's say that I am the boss, of course. And if I click here, I can open it as a page. Let's see that I am new in the company. So I'm going to run the employee template. So we have here one part for internal announcements. So this is a sync block among all the different employees where we can write whatever. So the marketing gal is getting married. So here we can comment and we can all cheer her and, and everything. Maybe she can even send us a photo of the child. Here is the most common things that we will need to do. So let's say that I want to schedule my task. So I will go here and I will be able to see all the tasks that I have pending. So these are already filtered for myself. Okay. And all the tasks that I have already scheduled. And then this is my personal dashboard. So this already filtered by the boss. Okay. So these are the tasks that I need to, to do today, in the next days, next seven days, projects coming up, my ongoing projects. Okay. Now here, my ongoing projects is coming up, meetings, contacts, contacts that I need to reach out to, this is very important, but these are the contacts that I need to contact because I am the owner of this contact. I'm the account manager of the project. And this is the same for all the other employees. All of them are gonna have this, but then if I'm the marketing gal, I'm gonna go here to schedule my task, okay? I don't have any tasks assigned to me, everything that I need to get done, okay? The sample data, so I don't have much uh, data, but as you can see, this is already filtered by the marketing gal. So every time that there is a new hire within the company, we just have to come here, create a new entry, new hire, and run the employee template, and that's it. He already have his own template, of course, then he will be able to modify this to his own liking, to add images or whatever, to make it more personal. But all his information will already be filtered here. Okay, It's already filtered by the new hire. Okay, so to don't make this video too long, I haven't explained about task management, the SOPs and, and so on. But if you want to see more information about this template, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video where you can check more images and so on. And if you find it useful, you will also find instructions on how to get this template for yourself. I've been working on this template for a little bit of a long time so i hope you find it useful and from my side that is it for this video and as always hasta la próxima